everybody, this is Chantel Thomas. You just tuned in to No More Silent Tears on KLNE, the Candle 88.1 FM. I have a special guest named Deborah Price. She has an awesome, awesome testimony. And we're going to hear from her. How you doing, Deborah? I am so blessed and satisfied, my sister. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Before we get started with your interview, I have to say that it is a pleasure to have you on our show today. I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to be a part of such a great cause. I'm honored. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, one of our first things we want to talk to you about is our topic on domestic violence. And um, our topic is rescued from the pain of, of your past. Can you share with us um, um, the, the silent cries that you had in your abuse? Well, I want to give you a little bit of my background. Um, 17 years ago, I was a pastor's wife um, and uh, a mother of, of one, but pregnant with twin daughters. Um, and. Uh, For seven and a half years in my marriage, I was going through, um, uh, I want to say that we were apostolic faith uh, with him, and um, so it was was sort of a hush-hush thing, because I was a pastor's wife, I was a a preacher's wife, you know, and um, I I felt trapped. Okay. I felt trapped. I, I understand when uh how how um ladies young ladies feel you know being in this type of situation where you have to be quiet it's like it's like you pretty much don't think you have a choice or a voice but you do mm-hmm. uh and sometimes it takes us being pushed out of our comfort zone um to realize hey i'm not the only person going through this wow. I, I do have a voice mm-hmm. I, I can stand my ground because one thing for sure, it's going to only get worse. Exactly. Slapping turns into punching, which turns into fighting, which mm-hmm. turns into eventually murder. Exactly. You know, so it, it may start off small, but it, it, it escalates. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't know, but domestic violence is not an isolated event. So, no. I mean, so I mean, it's a it's a it's a repeated pattern. And um, a lot of right. people need to know that it is. So whether, I mean, what were the red flags that you saw um, in your, in your case? Uh, what, what are some of the, what, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that question. Yes. What were some of the red flags that you, that you uh, saw in it, your. It's, it's so amazing because I do have to give you a, a little bit more of my background okay. because I, my, 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 my children's father and I, we really didn't date long. Okay. We dated like two months. And I tell people, you know, take out time to get to know a person because in order to get to know what, what a person is trying to get you, oh, they're going to pamper you. Yeah. You're the best thing that ever happened. You're going to get everything you want, things you never thought that you, you know, you could, you, you would, uh, someone would, would get. Mm-hmm. When, when someone's trying to get you, they're going to do everything in their power to impress you. Exactly. Well, my mother is a very strict, still to this day, a uh, very strict uh, woman of God. Uh, we, we were brought up Pentecostal in my mother's home. And uh, with my children's father, uh, we went uh, apostolic. Mm-hmm. So two strict backgrounds there. Um, I was 19 okay. um, when I got married. And I got married because my mother chose to marry me off. Okay, wow. Uh, and I know people said, well, Deb, you were 19, you could have left home. No, you don't know my mother. Mm-hmm. My mother did. She, she was not that type of mom that, you know, you hit 18, 19, you're going to do what you want to do. No. Um, the girls in my my mother's home, she pretty much had her, she, she had her teeth into us. So it was pretty much, she was very controlling. And what my mother said, mm-hmm. it, it goes. Um, I had an 18 year old sister who did move out. My oldest sister moved out at 18 and my mother felt like this won't happen to me again. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm the third oldest of, of 10 children. Okay. Um, my mother and my father had, uh, six boys and four girls. Mm-hmm. So, um, me being the third oldest, I was the next in line to take care of all my younger siblings. And, um, when I started developing, you know, getting a little older, mm-hmm. uh, my mom and her friend, you know, got together and they like, damn, Nisa, someone in her life. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, I'll tell you the truth. I didn't date, didn't, didn't know how to date, didn't know how, had never went went to a party, uh, never even went to the recreational center oh. <laughs> when I was at home with my mom. Uh, because in her eyes, the church bringing that she was brought up, that was all devilish and that was sinful. Okay. So I never got to go anywhere. So I ne- And we never got to see certain things on TV. So um, I, I was very green. I was very... Uh, uh, naive to a lot of, of, of things in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, so when my mother introduced me to my children's father, um, you know, we dated and, and he had his own business and he was 24, I was 19. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, and I'm going to tell you why we got married. There was no pregnancy, no babies involved. Uh, we went out a few nights together and on one night we were in my my uh, my children's dad's car mm-hmm. and we were kissing and fooling around like teenagers do. Yeah. My mother's brother walked up and saw us in the car and went and told my mother. My mother says, when we walk in, she says, um, you touched my daughter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, next thing I know, my mom says, you will marry her. Wow. She's yours now. Wow. You know, I, you know, I, what could I say? I was afraid of my mother mm-hmm. and uh, I married the guy. I married him. And they, like I said, dating somebody, it takes time because you can only hold out for so long right. and act so kind and so sweet and so good, you know, and not be yourself. But as soon as we got married, yeah, it all came out. Wow. And I, had ne- I, you know, I didn't, I had never been married before. It never really had a boyfriend. So I didn't know how. You know, I knew what he was doing was wrong, yeah. but in the faith that we were in, we, you know, you have to deal with it. You, you deal with it. Uh, the apostolic church that he was a part of at that time, um, when I did share with the mother of the church what was going on, she said, whatever is your job uh, mm-hmm. as his wife, you married him, you stay there no matter what he does. I don't care how many girlfriends he has, uh, you're his wife. Wow. You know, so mm-hmm. they were teaching me to let him walk all over me. Yeah. And I, I accepted it for seven and a half years, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, until, and, and this is what's so really, really, this is a, the really negative, really part about it that really got to me was, um, so we, we had a, a five years, two years after we were married, God bless us with a son. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had decided I didn't want to do that anymore. I don't want any more children because our marriage wasn't getting any better. And I didn't want a house full of kids to raise by myself. Mm-hmm. So, um, but five years later, he had been begging me for another child. I knew one daughter. Mm-hmm. And then again, the church got involved. Well, you're his wife. If he wants kids, that's your job. It's your responsibility to, to survive, uh, supply his needs. Mm-hmm. And so God blesses us with twins. Wow. And like the first, what, for, I guess the first two weeks, he was very excited about it. And uh, then he turned on me, and mm. he was not happy anymore. Uh, and he didn't want the the, the, the girls. He was, he decided I don't I don't want to be I don't want these children. I don't want to be pregnant. I don't want uh, to be married. And I'm like you know you know a young person that like myself who had never experienced anything like this. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out what what how do I handle this? And and I'm serious. I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm going to God because. Uh, this is my faith. I, I know how to pray. I know how to fast. I know how to go to God. Mm-hmm. But God wasn't, I got nothing. I got nothing out of that. Uh, and uh, next thing I know, he he was coming home, you know, more angry and, mm-hmm. um, you know, hitting on me. And, and this is the thing. Uh, people think, you know, if, a, if, a, if I'm not hitting you every day, you're not being abused. If you're hitting me one time a year, you're still right. abusing exactly. me. Exactly, exactly. Abuse is abuse, you know? Yes. Um, and it got so bad to where um, he picked me up when I was pregnant with our, our twins. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I'm, a, I'm a very petite person. I'm 5'4". Mm-hmm. I was very, very slim. Even pregnant with my girls, I was very thin. Mm-hmm. And uh, he picked me up and he threw me across the the the, the hall. Okay. And started beating, and started beating me, and you know, I, I had turned over um, on my my stomach. So, or well, he had turned me over on my stomach and started prancing on me mm-hmm. and hitting on me. Now, my children's father is six foot two. Wow. Okay. He's a big guy. So, um, I, I thought that night he was going to kill me. Mm-hmm. Uh, our five year old son was there, and his he, he has a. a at the time, his son was seven. He had a seven-year-old mm-hmm. who was down visiting us from Georgia, 
and they saw that, mm-hmm. and all I could do is just, you know, I couldn't fight him. I laid down the floor crying, mm-hmm. and and he told me to leave and go home to my mom, and you know, and, and I, I tell you now, had it not been for God, you know. I, I, I had made up my mind like the old church that said, you stay there and you put up with it, you deal with it, whatever, whatever. I was going to try okay. to not be a single mom, a single parent, and, and, and take care of him, take care of the children with them. Mm-hmm. Um, now, now but, Deb, I, I know. Uh, my girls, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to catch off, but I know, I know that this your experience is a little bit different than other people's experience. And... um. You, your background is a lot different than you know some people, which mm-hmm. ma- you know which makes it, uh, you know it's 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 a difference because of how he, you said that he would beat you. Um, mm-hmm. Was it any pattern uh, in his in his family? Did he have anybody that beat him, or was there any any type I, of? I, I understand that his reason for his anger was because. His mother had him when she was like a teenager, mm-hmm. and you know back then that that just wasn't tolerated. Or and she was not married, and and she uh, left him at a, at the hospital. And his grandparents raised him. Okay. So he felt rejected by his right. mother. Exactly. He felt rejected by his dad. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, to this day, he, they don't have a relationship. Okay. So a lot of his anger came because he felt nobody cared for him. Okay. You know, I have a better understanding of that now than I did then. Right. You know, even uh, trying to talk with him to calm him down, and we would talk about uh, what was going on with his his, his grandfather was abusive mm-hmm. to his his wife. Okay. Um, his father was abusive to his wife, and that's and like I said, that apostolic faith that I was in. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying all all the apostolic churches are like that. Yeah. They were apostolic, and they they said, would say things like, well. Honey, my husband grew out of it. Yours will grow out of it too. Yeah. And, yeah. But you know, there's there's so many women that's that's dead. You know, exactly. trying to wait for somebody to grow out of something like that. And you you, you your, your life is important. Exactly. You're yes. for a reason, not for somebody to take you out. Exactly. And you know, and but until you until you can wake up to to realize, you know, I can do better than this. Even if you don't want to be in another relationship, you. You don't have to put up with somebody abusing you. Exactly. Uh, you know, my my mom used to say, if if the parents, if I didn't whoop you enough, you know, God didn't give you a husband for him to whoop on. Yeah, what we're gonna do, we're gonna um, we're gonna continue. We're gonna continue on the next because you're gonna if you if you would allow us to have you come to the show again, you know, be a uh, guest right. on our intro. We want we want to um have you come on the show again, and we're gonna have a continue of rescue from the pain of our past so we're gonna leave we're gonna we're gonna leave a little a lot more for the listeners to come back and listen to the rest of your show okay your interview but um today we're 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 talking about rescue from the pain of our past and deb uh has a a beautiful testimony how she came out we're gonna we're gonna have her come back on the show next time and share the, the rest of her show deb i really appreciate you coming on the show today um, Sister, thank you so much for this opportunity. No, it, it means a lot to me. Thank you. Thank you because somebody out there needs to know that they're not alone and they can, Amen. yeah, they can re- be rescued from the pain of their past. Thanks for tuning in to No More Silent Tears radio talk show. Please join us again on the candle 88.1 No More Silent Tears. For more information to, or to be a guest on our show, contact us at nomoresilenttears.thomas at gmail.com or you can visit our website at www.facebook.com slash no.moe.silent.tears. We can be rescued from the pain of our past and walk victoriously in our destiny. God bless you.